Hey guys, I'm Ian, and today I'll show you how to keep yourself from writing duplicate test code by making method set run every time a test is run. So first we're going to start out with making a class to test. I'll call it vector3. And in it, um, I'm going to have three fields, private, final, double, x, y, and z. And these vectors will be immutable, meaning they can't be changed after they're made. So that these x, y's, and z's will stay the same, and yeah. I'm gonna add some getters, pretty standard. And I'm going to add two methods that we're gonna end up testing. Um, I'll make one multiply. It, it's gonna basically multiply all of the parameters or fields in the vector by num and yeah here I'm making a new vector because this is this class is unchangeable unimmutable and that's gonna multiply everything uh, whoops why did I do that it should be a vector already. And here too. I'll make one called divide, which is just going to divide everything by the number. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a nice little class to test. So let's go and make a test for thingy vector three test. Now, there are four methods you'll typically use for. Um, not writing duplicate code in unit test. There are setup, teardown, setup class, and teardown class. So setup class is the first thing that's run. So we need to do before class annotation at before class public void. Oh, whoops. Our static void. Sorry, static void setup class. And now this test is going to be run every time the test starts. All of the tests right before all the tests. It's only going to be run once during the test cycle. So I'll just do a print line because there's not really any use for it. So set up class. Now the next test or next method that's going to be run is going to be the one that goes before every test. Every single test, every single method that is labeled at test. So public void set up. And I'll include a print line so that you can see how everything works. Okay. And here I'm going to define a new vector that we're going to be using in our test. So let's make a private vector3 vector. It's going to be the vector we perform operations on. So vector equals new vector3. And let's make it start at the origin. 0, 0, 0. Okay. So set up. Now we're going to have teardown. That runs after each class. This is going to basically unload everything. Sorry, my typing is loud. Um, I put another print line to show you everything. And vector equals null. We don't want to have the same vector each time. Although this will be run every time, so it won't do that. But. Um, after all the tests are run, it's not going to get unloaded until after all the tests are run. Like all of the tests that you have in your project. So now you're going to want after class, tear down class. Uh, by the way, these method names don't matter. It's just these are consistent naming conventions as I, that I use because they really explain everything well. So tear down class. So now we have all of our setup and tear down whatever methods set up. So now we're going to have our tests. So let's test the multiply and divide methods. So multiply. Um, we're going to do the expected.
Okay, so we're going to multiply everything by 2. And now we can use the vector up here now, so it's going to make everything easier. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going to change this to 1.0 so everything actually works. Because you can't multiply 0 by anything, or else it's going to be 0. And assert equals. You're going to want to import the JUnit stuff. So, there you go. And let's make one for divide two. So let's divide it by two, so everything's going to be 0.5. And this will not work. Not. Oh, whoops. Okay, so this won't work. Why? Because they are different objects. We don't have an equals method. You need to make sure all of your objects that you're asserting equaling um, work when you do the equals method. So you have to override the equals method. Um, oh, whoops. Sorry about that. And here you know what? Let's just use the net means equals thing, equals generator. It's pretty nice. Oh, look, there you go. I didn't know that. NetBeans actually generates these things that compare doubles easily. It's just pretty nice. Um, so yeah, now you have your equals code set up. This oh, this code over here basically just checks if this x equals other dot x. So, yep. Yeah. Now our test should work. Yep, they work. So yeah, over here you can see it set up the class, then it um, set up teardown, set up teardown for both of the met both of the methods, and then it tore down the class. So that's basically how JUnit works. Um, and yeah, make sure you do this equals thing. If you don't do equals, then it's not gonna work. And I guess you need to do hash code too. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you like my video. Um, please leave something in the comments below. Thanks. Bye. Jayun, it's gotta let me know. Should I commit or should I go? If you have tests, you'll know you're fine. They should work all the time. So they gotta let me know. Should I commit or should I go?